Welcome, welcome, welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Sheila. I hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. Today's story is about Louis Armstrong, and he is a great musician and singer. And so I have him on the TV scene. What a wonderful world. And because the book is called Just a Lucky So-and-So, the story of Louis Armstrong. So I hope you enjoy. In New Orleans, Louisiana, in a part of town outside of Storyville, Tucked in a corner called Back Old Town, in a section nicknamed the Battlefield, little Louis Armstrong was born black, poor, and lucky. My whole life has been happiness. And then you see his mommy holding him up. On the corner of Pedio and Liberty, little Louis lived in one room with no lights and no running water. But it was home to him and his sister, Ma Lucy and his mama, Mary Ann. Oh, no, sorry, May Ann. And then they are. Happy family. The grandson of slaves, little Louie toted laundry, hauled coal, sold newspapers, and scavenged through garbage to earn money for his family. On the streets, little Louie sometimes made his own trouble, but it was nothing his mama's sharp tongue and a switch from the China berry tree in Grandma Josephine's yard. Good and fix. Oh, because there's a police officer. I guess, oh, Louis went and grabbed some apples. I say never, I say never worry what the other fella has as long as you're having fun in your own way. Every day outside his window, little Louis listened up and down the streets the music of brass bands, funeral marches, honky tonks on Saturday nights, and church services on Sunday morning. See them all playing the music there? And there he is in his window, just soaking it all in. Across the street, he peeked through the cracks of funky butt butthole on cornet, the sassy ragtime music of Bunk Johnson, Buddy Bolden, and Joe Oliver followed him wherever he went. Johnson had, to had tone, bold and blue hard, but for little Louie, it was King Oliver who could outblow, outperform any horn player in New Orleans. The king of all musicians was Joe Oliver, and he's showing that right now. Isn't that cool? School learning at the Frisk School, the boys began began for little Louie to set at seven. Before school and after, on the Carfinis wagon, next to Morris, little Louie tooted a tin horn. Penny for your eggs, and pleaded nickel for your scraps. Although I could not play a good tune, Morris applauded me just the same. So there he starts practicing. Through the window of a pawn shop, a coinet caught Louie's eye. A $5 loan from Morris bought the coinet for Louie. Some brass polish and oil brought the horn to life. Nice. Down Rampage, Rampage Street, four boys harmonized. My Brazilian beauty, little Mac on drums, big nose Sydney on bass, Redhead Happy Bolton as baritone and the gravely tenor of Little Louie. The boy with a smile so wide, open kids called him Satchel Mouth. New Year's Eve in New Orleans was all music. Fireworks and midnight shots fired in celebration. Little Louie joined in with his stepfather's gun. All his scrapes with the law added up and at 11 years, Little, little Louie was sent away. I thought the world was coming to an end. Oh, no. They took him away because he, because of, oh, because he was shooting the gun on, on um, New Year's Eve. Oh, no, Louie. At the, at the colored waves home for boys, little Louie could barely eat. He missed his mama, his sister, and his cornet. 
Through his open windows drifted the call of the bugle. A bugle to rise, a bugle for chores, a bugle for bed. The band leader, Mr. Davis, told little Louie that boys from the battlefield don't belong in a band. Little Louie sang solos for everyone to hear. Mr. Davis listened and started Louie with the with the trambol trampoline. Then he played the drums. Mr. Davis made him the bugler. Then he put him on cornet and Mr. Davis made him the band leader. Finally, me and music got married at the home. The band traveled to play in every corner of New Orleans, uptown, downtown, West End, Spanish Fort, and Fort Old Town. <laughs> but for little Louie, there was nothing like walking through his old neighborhood at the head of the band, playing home sweet home. Lining the streets was everyone he knew. Right up front was his mama, May Ann. I could not think of anything but my good luck. Look at that. Wow, that'd be incredible. He's following his dreams, even though it took him some different places, but he's doing it. At 14, Louis returned to Pedral Street. Not so little. By then, he could make any song swing. Louis needed to hear a song just once, and it was his. He worked all day hauling coal and all night playing in honky tonks, tonks around town. Louis met Joe as Joe paraded through town with the onward brass band and followed him everywhere. Louis ran Joe's errands and carried his horn, but in the between times, Joe taught Louis note by note. In Joe's home, Louis filled up on rice and beans and music lessons. Louis traded in his first pawn shop cornet for Joe's used one. I prized that horn and it guarded it with my life. Look at that horn. Mm. Louis listened to Joe's horn, horn crow like a rooster, growl like a lion, cry like a newborn baby. Two horns side by side so close, Louis called him Papa Joe. Ab aboard the SS Sydney, he blew swings, waltzes, and dance tunes. All up and down the banks of the Mississippi River, on land, Louis blew with the tuxedo brass band, and then Kid Ori's hottest jazz band in town. Featuring Baby Dodds, Pops Foster, and his papa, Joe Oliver. Look at that steamship. Wow. When I picked up that horn, that's all the world, that, that's all. The world's behind me, and I don't concentrate, concentrate on nothing but it. And I love them notes. At a time in New Orleans, honking tonks were too small for the king. Joe hopped a train and blew goodbye to New Orleans. Chicago was waiting. Louis stepped in where Joe stepped out. His horn had folks talking about the little boy from the battlefield. Night after night, Louis filled up the halls, filled up the streets, and filled up his pockets with the music from his cornet. Four years later, Joe sent a telegram. Louis was ready to leave. He sent for me, and whatever he's doing, I want to do it with him. Nice. He had a mentor. All aboard. Louis sto stood on the train platform. Fish, sha <laughs> sorry. Fish sandwich in one hand, cornet in the other. Worried he'd catch cold in the windy city, his mama made him wear long johns. Long johns in August heat. Joe Oliver and Chicago were radium. I've never seen a city that big. On the south side of Chicago, at the corner of 31st and Cottage Grove, Louis peeked into Lincoln Gardens dance hall. A globe glittered from the ceiling and a balcony looked out over the dance floor. Joe and King Oliver's Creole jazz band warmed up. Opening night always makes you feel as though the little butterflies were running around in your stomach. There he is in Chicago. Louis' tuxedo was pressed and patched and small. He walked to the bandstand where Baby and Donnie Dud's little Hardin 
Honor Dutley and Bill Johnson waited. From the very first note they knew, he played quietly behind Joe, softly in back of Joe, echoing after Joe. Someone yelled, let that youngster blow. And Louie stepped forward and stood in front of Joe and blew. Look at him go. My boyhood dream had come true at last. Louis stood in front of bands in Chicago, New York, California, Europe, on records, in Hollywood, on Broadway, and on the radio. The little boy from New Orleans, Louisiana, from a part of town outside Storyville, in a corner called Black Hole Town, in a section nicknamed the Battlefield, was just a lucky so-and-so. So see him so happy as can be, touring all around. I was so happy, I did not know what to do. I had hit the big time. Yes. And then at the back is just more notes, just talking about, about Louis Armstrong and his story. Wow, I hope you enjoyed that story. And I hope you remember to keep going after what you really love and have a passion for. Until next time, it's me, Michelle. Keep shining your light, right? Bye for now.